Anda tuh apa? Dan Hawa. Dan Hawa tidak ada perusahaan di dalam Indonesia ada mitra-mitra ya. Ada mitra-mitra dan Hawa. Jadi dia guys all of them buying commercials. Yeah. So they're buying so if you could separate. So this is uh we're having a conversation here. Really? Yeah, yeah. James and Daniel with uh Wilfred from Finsa. His son is here who's an agronomist. Uh, in coffee and uh looking at their different drying methods here and talking about it. Uh They have some naturals up here. Wilfred's background is he's a local potato farmer who got into coffee and um, for many years, but he's really a expert in coffee. In fact, Daniel, we were looking at a variety in Java. Daniel texted him a picture and he identified the varietal for us, the variety of coffee. It's P88, we weren't sure what it was. So he showed me different systems they have here. One is these, it's their metal beds, which is always a great investment. He said they cost about $50 each, which is pretty reasonable. Uh, but that he finds the same quality from pallets, repurposed um, for coffee drying. So these are their pallets over here. That they're drying coffee on. This is their factory here, where they prepare coffee for export to. Yeah, so it's just a shipping pallet, which is available in this area. These cost $5 each, he said, and same quality. Um, and they have a whole system here where they're drying in two stages. They dry down to, uh, 13% and then because the coffee is then stable and won't get moldy they store it and rest it for several days to slow the drawing equalize the moisture and then they bring it back out here and dry to the export level of 10.5% so and this is their dry processing factory I haven't been inside, but I already like what I'm seeing because everybody here uh, is <laughs> happy. <laughs> it has a good hat on, is working in a nice way. Uh, you know, I don't know. You, it's like the um, supplier, Masadi, we visited in Java, and he had such a nice environment for the workers, good lighting um, for handpicking. Everyone had a bottle of uh, their favorite iced tea and coffee or whatever by their workstation um, and uh, of course well it's a very competitive labor environment here and, and very near Bandung so if you want labor you've got to pay well and treat well and I think that um, actually makes for some good non-exploitative situations so I'm going to check out their greenhouse here Gotta find out what they're doing here too, but they do every single process, natural, honey, process, wet hauling, dry hauling, etc. Wilfred, what are, can you tell me what this is here? Are they, they're doing a small, they're doing a small wet processing here? Yeah, small, small wet processing here. Okay, your main wet processing is, is at your farm? In the farm, in the farm, okay. in the field. Uh-huh, and why are they doing this here? Because it's come from a farmer who closed from here okay yeah so you buy cherry and then this greenhouse is for what normally we do drying in the rainy season in the greenhouse okay but in the dry season i don't like to dry here because it's too hot <laughs> right right yeah it's better to do outside eh? yeah this is also Cooler. for seeds though yeah it's all about seed growing potato. seedling yeah. oh okay. coffee seedling mm -hmm. potato seedling so uh, you have a hundred hectares of your coffee farm. How, yeah. Do you also still have potato production? Or? Still, we still. Yeah. Do. How many hectares of potato? Maybe another one hundred. Yeah. This is my family business. Yeah. Potato business is my family business, and coffee business is my own business. Which one makes more money, <laughs> potato or coffee? Uh, coffee potato uh, fast money. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Coffee uh, take a longer time. Yeah. yeah. But more money or less money or same. Maybe at the end of the day, it's uh, the same, yeah? <laughs> Have you heard of... very much money good. from potato, I will quit. 
Copy yeah. business. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Your potatoes are mainly seed potatoes, or you're mainly growing? seed potato. So yeah. then you're selling that to the farmers. You sell yeah. it to the farmers. Yeah. Okay. And I learned the seed production in your country. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see okay. Davis. Okay. Yeah. I went there for. Yeah, uh, they have a good ag school, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have cherry here? Are you? This is uh, cherry in fermentation. Oh no. I thought you didn't do whiny coffee. No, maybe only one or two days uh, fermentation, yeah? Why? Pardon? Why do you do this for...? Because we want to do like... Uh, this is end of the season, so the, the quality is not so good anymore. Mm. Uh, we do like lactic fermentation because we want a smooth. Yeah. We want a smooth uh, tasting coffee. How many so days? You're not two days, maximum two days. One to two days, yeah? Because we are here is uh, rather hot. So your normal naturals are not fermented in the bag, or you always do this for uh, natural? We have natural that not fermented in the bag, and some with fermented in the bag. Okay, yeah. What's strange for me is that the nature of fermentation is not going to be the same with the same process in different places based on the different microbes. <laughs> The d different cherry is just different, and, and yeah, you can't different count. different varieties, different tastes. Different yeah. microbe, different taste. Different way, different right. taste. Yeah, so, yeah, I guess that's a good thing in a, yeah. in a sense. Yeah, we Except the result here is always fermented coffee. <laughs> Maybe not this with two days. Yeah, two days is less. In but, Florida is now, many people are doing four-day fermentation for honeys and naturals. And some people even do like one week, two weeks. Well, like winey process. For Jakarta yeah. process, winey process, yeah. Rotting, rotten copy process. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Rot rotten it's fruits. Really popular here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like well, the problem is, is it goes who drink any coffee, yeah. fermented Maybe coffee, coffee for the whole life. Like falls yeah. apart after life. several yeah. months. How, how can I, can but here, if you're going to sell it within a month of processing, maybe you know it's uh, a different, different thing. Anyway, Will Dunn's very knowledgeable, so. Very interesting to see all his different trials and tests here and techniques. This is feels a bit like a laboratory. tanks, the crops over, and really incredible setup going out to the patio where they wash, dry, and 
if you ever wondered where Kobe Luak comes from. There it is. Not a lot of people know that. It's a really old, supposedly the oldest area in central Java of uh, coffee production. 120 years in this area. Whereas most coffee production here is new. And there's actually not a lot of coffee coming from central Java. So we're checking out the lab of Mr. Sukran, who's in the black there. Uh oh, don't give him the phone too early. Uh -huh. But this place, he's appears to be, he, he built his own haulers, he built his own pretty much everything. That the more I look around, the more I see surprising things here. Different uh, bicycle and moped tires. Motorcycle tires. Check this out. <laughs> that works. He has an Isuzu truck motor that he takes this portable power for up in the mountains. It's on wheels. And then this is his roaster that he built. And Daniel pointed out, if you look carefully at this, I thought it was a screwdriver. But it's actually uh, like a turn signal wiper uh, control switch from a car. This must be another car uh, lever from the So cool. Temperature control and amazing. So he's starting up the wet hauler, they have a small amount. Even though the harvest is over, uh, just doing a little bit of, of it for us to show us. Oh, geez. Shows how the coffee, when it's wet holds, 
is still a seed and some have fallen here and just plant themselves in the, the pile because there's enough, enough soil I guess underneath his uh, pile of, of pulp and parchment. parchment. This is pretty crazy. I we saw this coming in. We're here to look at some of the oldest coffee in Central Java, oldest planting area uh, uh, here, and then we see this on the drying patio. I'm like, what? It's uh, shredded plastic recycling. They are separating and recycling plastic. As you know, recycle, plastic recycle outsourcing is a big issue. So I can't tell, I can't see any language on here to see where it might be from or what product. Interesting. Definitely something new. I've come to the origin of plastic. Not. It's pretty amazing how this whole community helps each other, like they all haul, haul each other's boats out. And, you know, pretty neat. But we went over to the restaurant and they only had uh, older fish. So just come over to the boats and ask them how much they want. It's pretty cool. And the restaurant said they cook it for us. So. Everything is possible in Indonesia. So yeah, when you're when you're at Origin and you're making films or, or videos, then uh, a lot of times you need to change lenses right in the middle. So that's a little difficult when you got a nice 7200 28 with ISM. Uh, you definitely want to take care of this lens. What I do is I like to get in a crouching position. I'm just gonna hold this lens here. Get ready for my shot. Get this nice water reflection I've got down here. Yeah, and we're ready to go. <laughs> it's okay. I've done this before. These are these high-quality lenses are 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 made for this. <laughs> <laughs> 